Hello, and welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today we're going to be doing Systems Design Episode 2. What does a systems design round look like? So, you know that you need to learn systems design, but what sort of things are you going to be asked? Well, systems design interviews can be summed up like this. Your interviewer will give you the task of designing some scalable system, and you have to guide them through how you would do so. These interviews contain no coding, so if you suck at lead code, rest easy because you get a one round break. You'll be given a question in the format of, how would you design a photo sharing website? This could be Flickr or Instagram. Can you design a cloud file storage system? This could be Google Drive or Dropbox. Can you design a messaging app? For example, Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp. What's next? From there, you can now start your design. You're gonna to need to come up with a design for whatever system you're tasked with. This is typically done on a whiteboard and you'll be drawing boxes, arrows, etc., between each of the components in the system. In the age of virtual interviews, you'll likely be doing this online using a service like Google Draw, Excalidraw, or one of the other services out there. Make sure you know your tool ahead of time so you don't waste time on interview day. You're gonna be charting out how data is flowing between the pieces of the system and how the components talk to each other. Seems simple, right? Well, you're missing one thing. You know, it sounds quite straightforward. Why are these interviews that hard? Well, the challenge of system design interviews is this. Notice that the interviewer gave you an extremely vague task and it's your job to design the system. Say they asked you to design Instagram. Your mind is probably racing that, okay, I need to show videos, photos, stories, reels, send and receive DMs, see suggested posts, upload content, etc., etc., etc. Instagram is a massive app. But did the interviewer actually ask for that? Did they say they wanted all of those features? Even if they wanted a basic version of the app that just loads photos and videos, there's still so much to know. And that's where the most important elements of a system design question come in. Scoping out the problem. The biggest thing which separates a successful system design interview from a failed one is usually the ability for a candidate to properly scope out the problem and establish what exactly the interviewer is looking for. Going back to our Instagram example, maybe the interviewer is only interested in how you handle photo and video uploads and showing a timeline. Or maybe they're interested in something else completely. You cannot just assume that the interviewer wants XYZ features. You must clarify exactly what you're designing. So what are some other things you might want to ask the interviewer? Okay, you could ask, what's the maximum acceptable latency for our system? I.e., how fast should it be to handle user requests and respond to them? How many requests per second is our system expecting? A system expecting 10 requests per second is drastically different from one expecting 10,000 per second. How much data do we expect to generate? Storing one gigabyte per day is easy. Storing one terabyte per day is hard. Is uh, real-time data of the utmost importance for our system or can users see slightly delayed values? For example, on your Instagram photo, when you post it, if you're getting a lot of likes, Maybe that like count isn't the most up-to-date and actual amount of likes you have. Maybe it's lagging behind because it's not really a big deal if you see that you have 200 likes versus 195. Basically, you see that you have a lot of likes. At this point, once you've answered, uh, once you've kind of posed these questions to your interviewer, you can now start designing. And once you've properly scoped out the problem and figured out just what you want to solve, you can now start drawing out the pieces that are gonna compose your system. This involves drawing arrows, showing the direction of requests to different pieces of the system, boxes for things like your database of choice and other services in your system. This part is really open-ended. There's so many choices to choose from technology-wise that most of the time the interviewer is not really looking for one single right answer. They care about, can you justify the pros and cons of your choice and why it makes sense in this context? This is really the most important part of any systems design interview, and it is what determines your success or your failure. So just a few more things on your design part. As you're gonna be designing your system, your interviewer is going to probe your design and ask you questions meant to test your knowledge in a particular area. 
If you chose X database, they'll, tr they'll ask you why you chose it over Y database. Here's your time to defend your choice and again discuss the pros and cons of using X versus Y and ultimately why you want to use X. You may not have the time to complete your design and that's fine. Your interviewer may want to do a deep dive into a particular component and spend the majority of the time there. Whatever you end up designing, you need to make sure that you tie all decisions back to the original problem exploration you did before you started to draw and use that to justify decisions. This shows that you understand the scope of the problem and you're actually solving what the interviewer wants. There's nothing worse than when a candidate scopes the problem out correctly, but then starts designing something completely different than what we had agreed on in the beginning. This just shows that they're not really taking into consideration what I want as an interviewer, and they're kind of just doing their own thing based on things they've studied before, and it's usually an instant fail, which is not good for the candidate. Okay, so to recap, we talked about what a system design question looks like and what they're comprised of, why they're tricky, and at a high level, what you want to do when approaching one of these questions. Of course, we're still in the beginning of this series, so I didn't go into depth at all uh, about the details as it's too early. This video is just to give you an idea of what kind of questions you'll be asked to solve and what are some important considerations are. In the next video, we'll be going over a simple algorithm for solving any systems design question you may receive. After that, we'll start going into the individual pieces of system design and going over all the core components that you need to know. Thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next video and leave a comment and a like because it helps a lot with the YouTube algorithm. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day. I'll see you in the next video.